Welcome back. Question 14 asks us to choose the variable that fits the shape of the distribution. Here's a picture. Which situation could match this picture? Is it repeated volume measurements of a one liter bottle of soda? Is it salaries of the New York Yankees in 2010? Or is it quiz scores on a very easy quiz? There are no numbers here, but this is a number line, which means that higher numbers are to the right and lower numbers are to the left. Let's talk about the Yankees. The New York Yankees are not heavily paid in, refer in, in relation to the athletes, meaning it's not like they're all paid like A-Rod money and then just a few that aren't making very much. It's there are more that aren't making as much and then you have a few superstars. So that distribution would actually be skewed to the right where most of the values would be to the left and there would be a few higher values. So it's not going to be salaries of the Yankees. Repeated measurements of a one liter bottle of soda, you're going to have most of the values around that one liter. There might be a little bit more than a liter, there might be a little bit less than a liter, but it's typically gonna be around one liter. It's not going to have all around that one liter and then a few that are super low. That's not gonna meet quality control measurements. That's not gonna work. That would be more of a symmetric distribution. So that means quiz scores on a very easy quiz. So on an easy quiz, most people are gonna score pretty high. There might be a few that didn't, but for the most part, they're all gonna score pretty high. So that would be our answer. We're gonna go back to StatCrunch and we're gonna make a dot plot and then we're gonna discuss the shape, center, spread, and outliers or unusual features for calories this time. Picking up right where we left off, we're going to graph a dot plot but this time we're gonna talk about calories. So I went to graph, dot plot, select calories and hit compute. And now we wanna talk about the shape of the distribution, which to me looks pretty symmetric. Any unusual features, there's not any points that are really far away, there's not any huge gaps. What is the center of this distribution? Well, there's one super high value that has a lot of counts, that's at 110. And in the shape, I should say that it's unimodal because there's one clear group of high count. And then the spread, how spread out is the data? We have not developed the formula for standard deviation and we have not developed the formula for interquartile range. The only thing I really know about is the range, which is saying from 50 to 160 would be the best way to describe this distribution. Let's copy and paste this into our notes and head on over to our notes. Okay, again, we said that our shape was symmetric and unimodal. No outliers. And the center was right at 110 calories. And it was spread out from 50 to 160 calories. And again, we don't know standard deviation or interquartile range at this point. We would use standard deviation, but we don't have a formula for that. We're gonna bounce back to StatCrunch to make a histogram now of the calories. A histogram is another way that we can visualize distribution of um, quantitative data. Histograms look kind of like dot plots, but they have bins that put the categories in. So if a dot plot has actual values, but um, a histogram creates groups where you collect the data in those groups. So going back to StatCrunch to the same data set, we're going to select graph, histogram, and we wanna select calories. There's a lot of options you can choose here. We're gonna change the type of frequency in just a minute. Uh, we can change what we start with, what our width is, but I like to let StatCrunch do its thing. It determines an appropriate amount of um, what the bin width is. So here's our histogram of calories. And we can use this to answer some questions. If you hover over a particular column, it will tell you how many are in that column 
and it'll tell you the actual interval. So this is from numbers 100 to 110 calories. And that bracket means you are including 100 calories and the 110 with the parentheses mean you're not including 110. So if you had the actual 110 calories, that would actually go in the next column. So these are going in groups of 10. On the guided notes, we're asked what percent of cereals have a calorie amount less than 80? So less than 80 is going to be these two groups right here. The first one here that is from the 50 to 60 group has three. And the second one has two. Now remember, there were 77 cereals that we were looking at. So that's five out of 77, which we wanna turn into a percent. Five out of 77, as a percent, we take five, we divide it by 77, and then we multiply it by 100 to get the percentage and add the percent symbol. So five out of 77 is 0 0.065 multiplying by 100 and adding the percent sign, that's gonna be 6.5%. In the guided notes, it asks us to change this to a relative frequency histogram. The way that you do that, you can either create a new histogram or you can go and click the options and click edit because it's got the same data that you just used. So instead of type frequency here, we're gonna change it to relative frequency and click compute. Well. I'm gonna do a regular graph, a regular histogram for calories as frequency here so that you can see them side by side. Hmm. Notice in the top left-hand corner, you'll see relative frequency versus frequency. Frequency is how frequent something occurs. Relative frequency is that same frequency as a percent in relation to your population. So in this graph, there is 29 out of 77 in the column from 110 to 120. In the relative frequency graph, that is 0.377 or 37.7%, which if you took 29 divided by 77, you would get 0.376. So what they've done is they've turned each of these columns into a decimal so that you can see the percentage out of 77 that is represented. So if we change the graph to relative frequency, the numbers don't change. It's still 6.5%. So look, if you had this bin right here, because we're talking about less than 80, that's about 0.04 or 4%. This one is about two and a half or 2.5%. 4%, 2.5%, that's what we calculated. The so relative frequency, frequency, the graphs are identical. It's just that one is raw count and one is as percent. Now, what happens if we change the bin width? That's the last question that we talked about today. The bin width, it's B-I-N, adjusts what your graph looks like. It either, you make your bins bigger so you're, you're adding more points into a specific group or it makes it smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the applet and I'm going to select histogram with sliders, and I'm gonna talk about calories, and then I click compute. So here is the applet. I can change my starting point, but there's really not any point to start lower than 40 because there are no uh, calories, no cereals that have um, less than 40 calories. I can change the bin width, so I can make it bigger, And notice as I start to make it larger and larger and larger, my picture actually becomes less clear. It's not really great in terms of, I don't know, I'm talking about 100 to 150. Well, what's the, what's the typical serial value? I don't really get that from this. When I go back down to 10, I can see, okay, it was, it was roughly about the 110 to 120 group. That's a better picture. I can get more accurate with my values. But if I break my bins even further apart, that doesn't do a great job either. So it's like a sweet spot. You're kind of like Goldilocks. You don't want it to be too wide and you don't want it to be too small. You want it to be just right. 
That's why I leave it up to StatCrunch. Unless you want it to go, like, unless they pick um, numbers that are decimals or something, which they wouldn't for integer values. But uh, I, most of the time, it, it works out perfectly. So I would just leave it as is. It's a lot of information. It's your first adventure into StatCrunch. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you for Module 8.